Growing up, I had dreams and aspirations, but always felt like the kid that didn't fit in. For the most part, I wasn't a bad kid, but when I made the transition into adulthood, I turned to the streets for guidance. This led to getting locked up in juvenile hall, doing time in CYA, and eventually a 120 month sentence in federal prison. I had a lot of time to think and reflect during my federal sentence. So I share with you what I learned, hoping I can positively influence someone else's life with Prison Talk. What up? Big Herc 916, getting down with Fresh Out. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share the, share the channel, and go to freshoutseries.com, pick up a bar of soap, and wash your ass. Yeah, man. Um, it's crazy. I was just talking with somebody, man, that I did a, a time with, and we were talking about how a lot of guys come to jail and they think it's a, a party. They think it's like, no big deal, man. It, it, it's, it's like some people have become so institutionalized to the process of going to jail that it's no different than going to a college. It's no different than, you know, um, pledging a fraternity. Um, it's just the norm. Check this out. Yeah, so as you can see, for some people in jail, it's a party. It's a party, man. It's it's uh, it's just a way to pass time. There's no reflection. There's no um, focusing on what you need to do when you get out to be a better person. How you got there, um, life lessons. Um, no, no care in the world, you know. A lot of these guys probably have kids, you know, family members on the street. They're not really concerned with that. Maybe there were some um, wrongdoings in their cases. They might be able to get out on technicality. They, they probably haven't even tried to go research their case or study in a law library. And um, it's sad, man, but that's the reality of a lot of these guys in prison. You know, they, they you know, you're talking to your girl on the phone you know, having phone sex, or you're going to a visit, you know, thinking you, you know, going with your, your stuff all creased up, going to the visit, thinking you all fly. And then you just sit around all day. It's like a big daycare, man. Sit around, guys watch TV, they work out, play cards, uh, play sports. But I mean, it's only a handful who are going to the education department to uh, get a college degree, to study real estate, to study business, to actually um, do something to further themselves. So when you talk about rehabilitation, hey man, ask your people in, in, in jail or in prison, what are they doing to help themselves? What are they doing to further themselves so that they can be better people when they get out? It takes effort, man. I used to go to a law library and it would be a handful of people over there and you come back to the unit and everybody is watching the NBA or music videos or some other garbage. That's the mentality. You know, I always thought it was just like a really conditioned brainwash mentality to think that the jail conditions were normal and that, um, you should take so much pride in being in that place. To me, I was just embarrassed every day I was there. There wasn't nothing pr 
prideful about having to share facilities with hundreds of other men. It's like I, I copped out and, and, and uh, went and sat down and now had to have somebody watch over me. <clears throat> you know, I made a stupid mistake and had to pay my debt to society, quote unquote, but um, never did I accept the conditions around me to be a party to be a place of um, joy that I, I, I tried to normalize. I never called myself an inmate, never called myself a convict. And um, I didn't have any homies in prison. I didn't, I didn't hit the block and, and have, you know, guys from my hood that was in the, in the prison with me and, you know, we were talking about old times on the street. I didn't have any of that. So maybe it hit me a little bit harder. You know, a lot of guys, it, it was it was wild when, you know, the homies roll up. Oh, what's up, man? And they'd be like embracing each other. And it's like, man, you know, how crazy is it that you grew up with somebody, a childhood friend, and now you guys are in prison together? One of you guys might be doing five. One might be doing 20. One might be doing life. It's like, that's horrible. There's nothing welcoming about that experience. That's a horrible experience. That's a horrible reunion. Those guys should have been somewhere at a barbecue, at a uh, at a family function, you know, enjoying each other at a, at a child's birthday party, not in prison, busting spreads. It's really, it's really just a, it's a program, you know, and until we break that program, and get these youngsters out of the mind state that it's it's no big thing. Oh, you know, some dudes like, oh yeah, my you know, prison. I went down there and he had a little break. And what well, you need a break from? You're a grown man. What are you running from? You got to change that mentality, man. That it's it's a normal transition through life. There's no normal transition through life that entails prison or jail. It's not normal. Doesn't have to be, and it shouldn't be, man. You guys tell me what your opinion is in the conditioning, in the mind frame, <coughs> excuse me, of somebody in prison. And should the party and the hanging out, should you try to make it as pleasurable as possible to make you, you know, think that, hey, we're chilling? Or should you be focused on rehabilitation? You know, some of the prisons, I think if, if we had more of the format that they have in some of the Danish countries where they integrate you into society, you wouldn't become as institutionalized because you would want to change because you see that you have self-worth. And I don't know if more people have self-worth in prison. That's why they have these guys in these hierarchies and they, they think there's value in there. But what about that value on the street? What about that value to your family, to your friends on the street, not in prison? Because in prison, man, it's cutthroat. Somebody be a friend one day and the next day they might be asked to do you in. And that's the reality of prison life, man. Big Herc, 916, fresh out. Hello, my name is Big Herc, 916, and I'm from the Wash Your Ass Committee. And I'm here to help you clean your booty hole. So I have some scents here that I would like to share with you. I have um, Festival, I have Butt Naked Scrub, I have some Oatmeal Milk and Honey, I have uh, Jamaican Me Crazy Festival. Um, you can take a pick from one of these, these scents and wash your ass, make your body feel better about itself, get rid of the funk, and I would like to make sure I can give you a good deal, so let me know. Go to FreshOutSeries.com, pick you up a bar, and please wash Stop your ass. walking around with a crusty butt, smelly ball sack, and a funky hoo-ha. Big Herc said wash that ass. Pick you up a t-shirt at FreshOutSeries.com.
Lockdown's over. Get your yard time in. Exclusively at FreshOutSeries.com.